Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of 247 DIY. Have you ever had an older laptop that's just gotten really slow, you can't use it right, doesn't seem to run right, and just overall very frustrating? Well, today we're gonna show you some steps on how you can breathe some new life into an old laptop. So for this video specifically, we're gonna be working on this older uh, Lenovo IdeaPad Z710, uh, but these general concepts will work for pretty much any laptop out there, so. Um, regardless of what brand your laptop is, you should be able to apply these to your situation. So for years and years, this laptop uh, was a really good workhorse. Um, it just seemed to be very fast. It did everything I needed it to, and I just didn't want to give up on it. Um, some of the tech on it is a little outdated, but I figured for a relatively low amount of money, I could bypass having to buy a new laptop right away, and I can buy a new laptop further down the road and still get some life out of this one. So this has an Intel i7 processor in it, albeit um, an older i7 processor, but it's still an i7, um, very capable processor. Um, because of that, you know, I, I still wanted to see if I could get some, some use out of this laptop. Specifically, um, I'm finding time away from the house in which I can do a lot of editing for the YouTube channel. Um, and I just wanted to be able to use this. now. The problem with laptops is 99% of the laptops out there, the graphics cards are integrated into the motherboard. And unfortunately, these graphics cards um, and drivers on this laptop are very much outdated. I can still use Premiere Pro on this. However, I just get an error every time I try to open it, um, saying that the graphics are not up to date. It makes it a little slow to use, but for now, I can still power through. It, I can still use Premiere Pro. It's just not the fastest operation. Outside of that though, we can breathe some new life into this. Now what was happening with this laptop was I was getting the 100% um, disk usage error and the, basically it bricked the computer. You could barely use it. It was so slow, it wouldn't function. It was just not working well at all. I tried several clean installs of the operating system. Really didn't work. Um, you might get one or two you know, good days out of it you know, right after reinstalling the operating system and it would just go right back to um, being a brick essentially. So what we're going to do today is four things. Um, first of all, just to get it back to running properly is we're gonna put a new hard drive in it and we're also going to be upgrading it from a um, hard disk drive to a solid state drive. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, the other thing we're gonna be doing is replacing the battery because it has been sitting for a while and for some reason while it was sitting, um, I know the last time I was using the computer the battery was fine but now it won't hold the charge. So we're gonna be replacing the battery very easy on that one. We're also going to be upgrading the RAM on this, and we'll get into that in a minute. And then finally, um, years ago, the um, CD-ROM drive died, and so we're going to be replacing that. There's not very much that really needs to run off CDs anymore. Everything's either uh, plug in through a USB or you download it directly from the internet, things like that. But um, since it's broken and we're in here messing with things, we might as well just replace it so that it has a working CD drive. So that's the four things we're going to be doing today. Um, so let's jump right into it. So for starters, we need to remove the battery. On this one, you have to uh, move your locking tab here to the left, and then you can take this right tab push it over to the right and it will pop your battery out. And since we're here, let's just talk about batteries. Um, I didn't want to spend a ton of money on a brand name Lenovo battery, mainly just because I work mostly in situations where I can plug into AC power and this whole build is really meant to just be because the parts that I found were very cheap and I didn't want to spend you know over $100 on a genuine uh, replacement Lenovo battery. I jumped on Amazon. This is from Ninja Bat. I'll put a link below. Spoiler alert, some of this work I've already done, and so at the very least I can give you, you know, some heads up on the products that I used. Um, this battery works, which is great. I can, the, there was no battery charge with this one. It wouldn't charge at all, so coming off AC power, the battery would, or the laptop would just die. So at least with this one, um, I can get, you know, the battery to charge and I can get battery life out of it. The one thing I will say is, and I did see it in a few of the comments on Amazon, is the battery life is not very long. Now, that's going to be depending on what you're using the laptop for, but um, it does seem to die relatively quickly, but you can still get, you know, maybe like an hour and a half. Um, that's probably about the max I've gotten out of it. Again, I'm running, photo, or not Photoshop, but Premiere Pro on the laptop, which, you know, is going to kill a battery a lot faster than just basic, you know, surfing the internet or watching videos. but. Yeah, not the greatest battery life on this, but for, I think it was 
30-ish dollars, at least it gets the, the battery part of this laptop back up and running. So next we need to remove this bottom panel. We flipped the laptop over obviously, and there are three screws that hold this panel in. There's one up here in the upper left corner, one over here in the upper right corner, and one right here down in the center. Then you can just slide it down a little bit and lift it up. So the first thing I did just to see if I could get this back to like new condition was to replace the hard drive. And I can say I've been using it for a couple weeks now. Like I said, running uh, Premiere Pro, uh, things like that, watching a lot of YouTube and just various, you know, typical normal activities on a laptop. And it is like a brand new laptop now. Now what I went ahead and replaced it with uh, was this Western Digital Blue um, 500 gigabyte solid state drive. This is the same one that I use in my desktop editing PC. Um, if you're curious about that build that I did, I have a couple videos on that. You can look them up on the channel or maybe I'll even link them down below. Uh, but this is what we went with. The one that came in this computer, um, kind of ironically, I didn't even realize it was a Western Digital Blue. Uh, but it was a hard disk drive. This was a one terabyte. I really don't need one terabyte of space on this one. The way this one came built was this was partitioned into two drives essentially. Um, you had a 500 gigabyte drive for your operating system and all that and then basically you know a separate uh, 500 gigabyte drive for storage and whatnot. So basically what happened with this and it is one of the bigger problems with hard disk drives is because there are mechanical components in here that need to spin you know the disk drives and then the disk drives themselves is they just wear out over time and they don't function properly so that was exactly my uh, 100 percent disk usage error so we went ahead and replaced that very simple let me just show you how to do it so since I've already replaced this, I'm not going to pull it all the way out just to show you guys, uh, but it is a very uh, simple procedure to do so. So first you're going to remove four screws, these outer ones, one here, one here, one here, and one here. What that's going to do is it's going to allow the drive to come out. Once the drive is out, you can unplug this plug. It simply pulls off to the right, and then you'll have your, your disk drive separate. Then you need this bracket though to transfer over to the new drive. So you're gonna remove four more screws. This one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. This is the old disk drive here. And you can see it's the mounting holes are gonna be same on the new drive. You're just gonna take those four screws you just took out and attach the bracket to your new drive and everything then in reverse. Plug your connector back in on the right side here and then place it down in and put your four screws back in just like that. Then once your disk drive's in, if that's all you're gonna be doing disk drive wise, um, you can go ahead and place your panel back on, replace the screws, put your battery back, and the next step is to reinstall your operating system. Now one thing I should have mentioned, uh, and I do apologize if you're sort of following this step by step, uh, one thing I should have mentioned is prior to taking everything apart and replacing the drive, power up your computer, get on there, get into the settings, and find the uh, authentication code for your operating system and write it down. Now, I have heard even if you haven't upgraded to Windows 10, you can still use an older code um, to verify Windows 10. This one was upgraded. It came with uh, Windows 8 on it. I had done the free upgrade to Windows 10. So when I had gone in, I really wasn't sure if it was the Windows 8 authentication code or if it was a new Windows 10 authentication code. Either way, I wrote it down and what we did then was just plugged in the installation drive for Windows. Now, I thought I was gonna have to go into the boot options. However, when I plugged this into the USB port and powered the computer on, it immediately found this and started the install process for the new Windows operating system. So if you have a genuine Windows installation drive, I can verify that you don't have to worry about telling the computer what drive to boot from. If, however, you've created your own Windows boot drive from a generic USB um, flash drive, I can't guarantee that it will automatically do that. You may have to, I believe it's F12, hit F12 as the computer is booting to get into your boot options and tell it to specifically boot from that drive. But either way, I booted from this drive. Um, we installed Windows 10, and then I put that authentication code that we pulled off the computer before removing the old hard drive and it authenticated just fine, no issues whatsoever. So that is good news. If you've upgraded to Windows 10, you can take that authentication code, throw your installation drive in there and use that authentication code even if you haven't purchased um, a new 
installation of Windows 10. So one other thing I'm going to do while I'm in here, um, and it is one thing that can be upgraded on most laptops, is to upgrade the RAM. So I believe, I'm like 98% sure um, that this had 8 gigabytes of RAM on it. Um, so it was two 4 gigabyte sticks. And what we're going to be doing is upgrading it to 16 gigabytes of RAM to 8 gigabyte sticks. Now, I did the research on what RAM I wanted to go with. Uh, quite a long time ago and then I just bookmarked it in my Amazon and it, it sat there for a while so I can't exactly remember why I came across this specific brand. What I can tell you is when I researched upgrades for this laptop, Crucial's website came up. They had their you know their own drive that they recommended, um, solid state drive, and they had their own um, DDR3 laptop RAM recommended and then that wasn't the cheapest in the world and I did more research and again like I said I can't remember how I came to this brand here um, but all I can say that is that if I saved it it was because it was considerably cheaper but also had very good reviews and it was something that I trusted so we ended up going with this um, Timotech brand here again I'll put a link down below on Amazon you can check out the reviews and the specs for yourself um, but let's go ahead and get this installed. So replacing the RAM is relatively simple. You're just going to pull outward on these tabs and your RAM sticks will flip right up. Take your new RAM sticks, push it in, and then just push down till it clicks. Just like that, fire the PC back on and make sure it all works again. Now the last thing we're going to be doing is replacing the CD drive over here, so let's get into that. And first we need to remove the old CD drive. It's held in place by just this singular Phillips head screw here. Once you have that screw removed, you can just pull it right out. Now the reason I have the drive open, um, you can see on the left is our new drive, which even though it said it was a compatible replacement, has a different faceplate on it. So all we have to do is swap these face plates over. So starting with the old drive here, there's a couple snap clips. One is right up here on the top corner, right there. You can just take a flathead screwdriver to press that down. It can be a little tricky, but push it down and it'll pop right out. And then down on the corner is the other snap clip. Hard to see here, but you'll find it. It's straight in there. It's very small. Um, but you're just going to depress that as well, and it should pull right out. And then you go to the new drive and pull that faceplate off of there. Same exact way, the, the two snap clips are identical. And it pulls right off. And then you can take your faceplate from the laptop and pop it onto the new drive. And there you go. Lastly, we need to swap this mounting tab from the old drive over to the new drive. That's what holds the drive in place. We removed that one Phillips head screw uh, to get the drive out of the laptop in the first place. So it's just two Phillips head screws on here. Take those out and you can swap the tab right over. Once the tab's secure, you can slide the drive right back into place and secure it back with that last Phillips head screw. So that's all there is to it, guys. I did power the PC on um, just to make sure that the DVD drive did communicate properly, and it does. Everything's working great there. Um, it is a little noisy compared to the one that was on there, but what are you going to do for... 30 bucks. So all in all, my final thoughts on this are these upgrades did get the computer back to where I can use it. Um, I'll be honest, in the meantime, you know, while I was waiting for some parts to come in, I was getting a little frustrated uh, with this computer. I'll explain that in just a second. So I did buy um, a new laptop that is fully capable of doing the video editing that I want to do. Um, but I just wanted to say that if you are doing this, um, just be aware, depending on what operating system your laptop came with, like this came with Windows 8. Um, we now have Windows 11 out, but it's been um, upgraded to Windows 10 on this, and there's been several 
um, versions and uh, quality updates of Windows 10 that have come out. And the annoying part is when initially when you do the clean install, even just the clean initial install of Windows 10, this thing acts like a new computer. Um, it, it operates really good, but unfortunately it's very difficult to tell the laptop just not to install any of these quality updates for Windows 10. And every time it installs even a small amount of the new um, releases of updates, it just starts to slow down, um, mainly just at startup. When it, when it starts up and it's been shut down and you start it up, um, once it's been on and you're using it, then it's fast and everything works great. But it, for some reason, it's just all that bloat that's with Windows 10 and all the startup stuff that it has to do. And it, it, um, Just be aware of that. If it's an older laptop that didn't come with Windows 10, uh, the capabilities um, that are going on here may get slowed down a little bit by all of the extra stuff, all of the weight and the heavy tasks required for you know the newer versions of Windows 10. But all in all, um, I am happy because I can use the laptop again. That old hard drive was so bad, this was basically a brick. You really couldn't use it. So um, this is just going to be a second laptop. I'm probably going to keep this out in the shop. If you watch my other videos, um, I do a lot of automotive work out in my shop. And this will be handy just to have out there. So if i got to order parts real quick or, or do some research, I don't necessarily have to use my phone or I don't have to run inside to use the computer. So this will just end up being a spare computer out in the garage. And like I said, I have my new laptop for on the fly, um, on the go video editing. So with that being said, um, I hope you guys found this useful. Um, if you did, feel free to leave a comment below if I forgot something, if I left something out, if you have any ideas or tips to go along with the video, absolutely leave a comment down below. Um, hit the like button if you enjoyed it, and if you're not subscribed to my channel already, please go ahead and subscribe. Thanks.